to showcase this panel for the breakout multi-platform hit series, Defiance. Um, as you can see, I'm not Greg David. My name is Samantha Sobolewski. I'm a fellow critic from TV Guide Canada, and I will be your moderator for today's panel. So Defiance has opened us up to an exciting world full of compelling characters and fantastic storylines, all while introducing us to the phrase stucco. Um, <laughs> thanks in great part to some of the brilliant actors who we have on today's panel, which I'm thrilled to announce and introduce to you. So please give a warm welcome to our panel lawmaker, Grant Fowler. <laughs> Jamie Murray. about the show as we are making it, and that's just, you couldn't ask for more better. Also because uh, Robin played the original sci-fi character, Mork, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the greatest alien of all time, I think that from him it's particularly high praise. Definitely. Yeah, and I, I think one of the reasons that people are also so drawn to the show is obviously the multi-platform aspect, so I was wondering if any of you have ever played the Defiance game before? I've only put a million hours in, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I play it, uh, I play it from, uh, when I can now because we're back shooting, but I've played it quite a bit. Um, I know that Jesse Rath would have played it, and Jesse is incognito somewhere. Uh, 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 there he is. <laughs> I tried, I tried playing the game. Um, I ran into a wall, blew myself up, and set myself on fire. <laughs> but she looked really hot doing it. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say that I love your stocko shirt. <laughs> so I'm going to start with Grant. You know, Kevin Murphy said that New Los Angeles will be explored in season two. So can you give us any teasers about that? Um, yeah, we do. We, uh, we have a look at uh, a couple of places outside of Defiance um, in the second season, which is great because we've been talking for some time as a creative outfit about, and, and I know that I've been getting feedback from fans, and Kevin Murphy has as well, about, um, you know, what's outside this one town? You know, we've seen what St. Louis looks like post-terraforming, but what, what else is out there? So uh, we've had a crack at a couple of joints, and one of them is Los Angeles, and it's uh, it's... I wonder if I can tease this without getting fired. <laughs> Let's try it! We're all friends here. Los, I'm not gonna tell anybody. Los Angeles oh. now has an enormous amount more readily available water than it used to. Let's just put it up. Um, are we gonna be meeting any citizens of Los Angeles? We will be meeting some very, very ugly citizens of Los Angeles. And we'll also be meeting some uh, citizens of the game. So if you're, if you're a gamer and if you've played Defiance the game, 
Uh, so there, are, there are a couple of uh, kind of rabid individuals who have been chasing after my bloke for some time that we may or may not come into contact with in the show. So that's kind of cool. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Graham Green for a question. So you're widely known and respected throughout Canada for your acting. Like, I myself have been watching it. I used to watch you on Deli the Dragon, so this is <laughs> Toronto. What's it like filming in Toronto? What's it like filming in Toronto? Well, it's, it's like opening the biggest present on Christmas Day <laughs> and finding out it's a pair of socks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love filming in Toronto. I've lived here for... Somebody said, if you've lived here all your life, and I said, not yet. <laughs> However, it's been, uh, it's been close to 40 years and I finally got a job in town. <laughs> so I'm happy. It's great being here. I love, I love being home. I love working here. So there you are. Now, Rafe was shot during the season finale, but I doubt a bullet wound can slow down a determined Rafe McCauley. So what state is Rafe going to be in when season two starts? What state are you going to be in? <laughs> Like, how are you going to move? You got shot. Oh, yeah. I got... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's the the shot. These are my new hearing aids. I used to work in the rock and roll industry, and uh, I'm, I'm deaf now, so I have to wear hearing aids. Uh, yeah, I got shot last year. What state am I going to be in when I come back? Uh, I'm, I'm looking for some payback. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is going to get a cap in their ass. <laughs> I ain't saying who, but his initials are E Rep. <laughs> See, when we started working uh, together, you know, we, we were, all, we're like gypsies, we're all in trailers, and I could hear this rap music. And I, I thought it was probably my son Jesse, or maybe it was Duchenne. And it was Graham. <laughs> He was blaring it out. <laughs> and actually, if you ask nicely, he actually raps. Just saying. Oh, he, is. he does. He's not bad. <laughs> Oh, I do have a rap album. It's called Rap for Old Guys. <laughs> My rap name is Easy Geezy. It's on iTunes, and I could do one from uh, one of my favorite ones. It's about some kids that live next door to my house. And it goes, stop your ass right there. That's as far as you get. One more step and you wind up in shit. You have just entered my piss off zone, so grab your narrow ass and haul it off my lawn. <laughs> and then suddenly, when I was watching the series, I was like, shit, or can I swear? I said, shut them. What happened to her? Like, I, I literally realized suddenly, God, like, she's fallen down this pit, and, and who knows? So I was kind of baffled myself. So um, then, yeah, then the script started coming in, and I was like, oh, okay, this is where we're going with it. So, um, yeah, she's, she comes... You'll see her again, but in a very different way. Iris has done a lot of growing. Um, yeah, she's she's a tough cookie, but yeah, you'll you'll see her again. Yeah, I understand that her fate is the front and center of the season two premiere. So, can you give us anything teasers about that? No, I don't know about that, but yeah, she um the the whole thing gets dark. It's like everything you saw in season one. Forget it. Like we, you, that was just introducing the characters. I mean, everybody comes back in a completely different way. It's been so nice starting to shoot it. I feel like every day 
I walk in and, and everything is just turned. Like you, you think you know what you're doing in the scene and then suddenly it just goes a completely different way. And I think all the characters have got a lot darker. Don't think that you know what to expect because you really don't. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's been mad. I think everyone else would agree. There's, there's big twists with everybody. It's, it's been huge, so it's been a lot of fun already. But as you can see, I've got a big old bruise here. So it gets pretty dark <laughs> in season two. So yeah, yeah. Okay, and Nolan, he got pretty beat up publicly at the end of the season. You know, he gave up his title as lawmaker, and he's got a missing, potentially dead daughter. So what kind of mindset is uh, Nolan going to be in when season two starts? Homicidal. <laughs> <laughs> Which is actually how he wakes up anyway, so it's not that different. Um, he's looking, uh, you know, when we, when we come into season two, he's, he's looking for his baby girl. So that's where we find him. And uh, he's traveled a long, long way to find him. So when we start with Nolan, he's, uh, he's a long way from the find. And no intentions of going back. Amanda lost the election. How is that going to affect her in season two? Oh, she lost a lot, didn't she? I mean, her ex-husband died. She came close to death a couple times herself. I uh, lost her job. And her sister has disappeared. Don't tell me what happened. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so uh, we see her struggling with, uh, we see her struggling at the beginning of season two. Um, she's in a very dark place. and. Uh, Scott just become her friend. <laughs> and Amanda's always seemed very diplomatic, you know? She's been able to see things from various perspectives as the mayor, but now that she's out, um, will we be seeing a harder and more cynical Amanda for season two? Uh, I mean, you, yes, you see diplomacy laced with cynicism on many different levels. Um, you know, she's trying to survive and she wants answers. She want, um, she's really struggling with her, the disappearance of her sister. Don't tell me what happened. <laughs> um, and, uh, Tilly, Tilly never watches the show. <laughs> or read the scripts. Or <laughs> so nobody tell her what happened. Don't tell me what happened. La, 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 la. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I mean, she's, she's definitely in a much darker place. Okay. I want to talk to someone who I feel has really evolved throughout this season, which has been Tommy, so Deshaun's character. So I want to ask you, uh, what can we expect out of Tommy in season two if he's grown this much since episode one? <coughs> Sorry, can you repeat the uh, second part? Of the... um, your character has grown so much, so what can we expect out of him since he's grown this much just in one season? Hmm. Good question. First off, this is my first convention, so... This is really cool. Um, I will say that uh, uh, I second what Stephanie was uh, touching on. All the characters have been completely flipped around, especially Tommy, because he's dealing with uh, two things this season. Um, feeling abandoned by Arissa, because she disappears, and uh, adjusting to the hierarchy, the new hierarchy in the town. So uh, we could uh, expect to see him really try to put his foot down. That's going to be tough with people like um, Nolan <laughs> <laughs> hanging around, but yeah, a lot of growth anyway. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to move along to our alien species. So first with Jamie. I mean, it's hard to believe you and Stamatar are the same person. Um, so how long does it take you to get made up as Stamatar? Well, actually, I spy with my little eye. My amazing makeup artist here, Colin Penman. Um, It takes two hours, which sounds like a lot if you've never been in a makeup chair, but actually, some ladies take almost as long just to get ready for a red carpet. So, it, yeah. Colin's amazing. He's really got the time down to two hours. And also, you know, people are like, oh my god, two hours? It sounds awful. I think it takes you a bit long. Does it take you longer than two hours? No, about that. But, you know, 
it's rather nice. I have someone fussing over me who's become one of my really great friends. I have to drink lots of tea, listen to some good music. I'm quite disappointed when I have to get out of the makeup chair. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's a, it goes on slowly. The transformation is gradual. And um, I always say that it's at the end of the day when I'm kind of, you know, I'm done really. I, I want to get home and have a hot bath and watch some telly. And I take it all off really, really quickly. And that, that's when the shock really happens for me and I see this boring brown-eyed girl thinking about <laughs> 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 it's, so it's disappointing for the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> takes it all off and we go, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Jamie, <No>. Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> my forehead. I, the other one's my real forehead. I do feel like that. But, um, yeah, it, it takes about the same, I think, roughly. But yeah, it comes off. Very well. Tell them about it comes off. It's very glamorous. They laugh at, yeah, I, I do look at the most glamorous at the end of the day. Not. The, I walked into the makeup chair the other day and she's literally just like ripping it off her face. Like, it off just comes right off. It's revolting. It's the sweat. It's still it's like, the sweat builds up underneath and it just comes off really easily. So, <laughs> really glamorous. That's really hot. <laughs> I sweat my face off. <laughs> Your character has kind of gotten to be a badass, you know, take down a lot of bad guys alongside uh, Tommy and Nolan. So I've got to ask, what was it like to kick uh, Alec Tar in the face? Or something? Sorry, no. Uh, Dave Tar in the face. Really satisfying. Yeah. Yay! But Tony's a lovely guy as well, so it's kind of it's kind of funny as well. But um, yeah, it gets even more badass. I mean, I've already been kicking some butt over the last two weeks. As you can see, I'm very proud of this Bruce. So that's why I put it out. Yeah. Tell them how you got it. <laughs> I can't. I wish I could. <laughs> it's not as bad as I'm making it sound. But um, yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of lot of kicking butt in the season from a lot of people. So um, yeah, yeah. You'll 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 see a lot more of that. She, she definitely won in a very um, erotic way. <laughs> Yeah, there are a lot of ways to win a fight. Um, Marissa definitely knows uh, all of them. So, Jamie, when I first started watching this show, I immediately thought your character was very Lady Macbeth, um, loyal to her husband, but at the same time conniving, devious, and manipulative. So, what's it like playing such a cutthroat character? Well, I mean. I really like her. I don't think she's a bad character at all. I always say in order to play a character, you can't judge them too harshly. So I'm always trying to look at why she's doing the things that she's doing. You know, and I think she has, you know, the best interests of her dear son, Alanik, and Daytac at, at, at her core. And, uh, you know, ultimately her own survival. And she's just very creative about how she gets there. <laughs> Woo! And Stella certainly isn't afraid to do what she wants when she wants, and killing Kenya definitely proved that. So, were you surprised when you met her? Tell me, tell me. Who said it again? Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 were you surprised when you read what happened in the script? <laughs> <laughs> no. You Not think? really. I thought, I thought she had it coming to her. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think she's really dead? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Nikki, the former mayor. Nikki. Oh, oh, okay. Yes, I think she went into a, a, a very, very deep sleep <laughs> from which she will never awake. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. She went to a better place. <laughs> Um, can you tease a little about the situation for a day tech and... <laughs> 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 
It's a very uh, uh, intricate and complex uh, society and world that we've set up, and it, that's complicated by the fact that it's not just one world. You also, you know, you, you've got the uh, mythology of, of seven different alien races, and obviously, Castathans have their own culture and society. And, and now, hopefully, the audience is on track and understands, you know. The world that we're setting up for you, and, and yeah, it's, it's like a chessboard that's been flipped. And so, uh, I think that you know, the very strong patriarchal society um, that has maybe put Stammer in some ways in a, in a gilded cage has been flipped a little bit this season. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it just, just happened as I was talking, it just, just all just fell out of me. <laughs> Wish I'd written it down. <laughs> um, Grant, can you talk a little about the father-daughter relationship between Nolan and Arissa? It's unconventional because of the setting, naturally, but very loving and realistic. It's um, it's it's probably one of the biggest surprises for me um, in the series. Was I, I love the dynamic reading reading the script, and and all the way from the beginning, it was. Uh, I kind of looked at it on paper as, as the most unique father-daughter relationship I'd seen in a television series, and, and maybe you know in a, in a film too. Um, you know, there's paper moon elements that Kevin's brought into the to the relationship, but the fact that she's actually an alien as well, and and all of the damage that's been done to these two characters, and how you know how just exactly how damaged and harmed they are when they come together, I've never seen written before. And, uh, and how they, you know, they, they form a life jacket for each other, they form a life raft for each other, is, is just wonderful to me. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It's, 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 we never talk about it. Uh, we never rehearse anything. Um, we, never, uh, we never talk about the ins and outs of the relationship, ever. Um, we walk on the floor and we play the scenes and we kind of go hot or colder. Uh, you know, Marco Polo, Marco. Polo. Yep, that one. And then we finish up the night and we walk away. Um, I don't know what makes that relationship, and I never want to find out because we'll probably ruin it if we find out. Um, but it's uh, it's special, you know. It's really special to play. It's lovely. Yeah, it's the nicest relationship I've ever played. So. And the nicest relationship I would say in defiance for sure. It's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Can be. And can be pretty ugly. <laughs> Especially when her forehead falls off. <laughs> I'm going to go back to you, Julie, for a minute because, you know, all three of the ladies here are very strong in their own sense. Um, but specifically, what's it like for you playing such an interesting, strong female character? Uh, well, that's what attracted me to the show in the first place. I loved how all the female characters were were very complex women. Um, you don't have your typical mother-wife victim role in this show. Um, and, you know, as, as an actress, I, you know, I've been doing this for almost 30 years now, and uh, the older you get, yeah, yeah. Did you start in the womb? She was <laughs> sure. I made money then. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I paid him to say that. <laughs> but, uh, but no, the older you get as, as an actress, unfortunately, the less interesting their roles come. And uh, for me, when I was sent this script, I really loved Amanda and the fact that she was a woman of power and uh, in a, struggling in her, within her power, but she was a woman of power and that she was as complex as she was because too many times you get scripts and it's like the girlfriend of the cop or the wife of the cop, or, <laughs> you know, and, and those are in, those can be interesting characters, but you're usually kind of secondary as far as the action goes. Um, I love playing a badass, yeah, I guess that's what I like to do. And I love having a cast of, of women that can all kick ass in their own ways. Oh, and just a little spoiler for season two. This one um, was in the back lot last week, I was with her, and she was doing the biggest stunt scene you've ever seen indoors, and kicking butt. She was fantastic. I, I know. Not all my anger issues after the month, so I'm good, I'm happy. Put it this way, after watching that, um, I feel sorry for Julie's husband because <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a sous car 
Oh my god, we do, we got a super. Hello. Will you come can you come down? Can we see him up close? Can you come down? Come down. <laughs> I love Supar. I have a thing to do. Yeah, so um, while they're coming down, um, <laughs> this happens every con darn. <laughs> You're actually a lot easier to fight than the other Sukkar. He's about here. You don't see, you don't see anybody dressing up like Rage Macaulay at these things. <laughs> what you gotta do is dig a hole in the ground and roll around in the dirt for an hour or two and then you're Rage Macaulay. <laughs> So we've seen uh, Tommy grow to have real emotions and physically get involved with Arissa. Um, and we saw him get emotional just at the thought of her leaving Defiance. So uh, how's he going to take the news that she's missing? Um, sorry, the second half? Uh, how's he going to take the news that Arissa's missing? One more time, sorry. <laughs> we can't really hear down here. Mumble, I mean, mumble clear. The Canadian accent. <laughs> I mean, it's in the <laughs> Oh, um, you know, I don't think he's going to be happy about it, that's one thing, but no, definitely he's, um, he took it pretty badly, I would think, because he was really invested in this, uh, relationship the first season, um, and then he had to adjust to her just disappearing and not coming back for a period of time. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to watch the first couple of episodes and how they interact and if they can reconcile or not. What, what did you do over there? He's always doing stuff. He's always doing stuff behind my back. I never prank him. And then, you know, you pranked me last yesterday. So I'm like in my trailer, you know, getting ready, got my pants on, you know. And someone just, so anyway, someone, someone just comes to the door and just goes, boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, oh shoot, no, I'm late. You know, so like I pull my belt on, whatever, I run to the door, and I open it, and there's like our poor AD. She's just looking up at me like, I, I look around the corner, and there's Graham, like, hiding. He's <laughs> like, peeking out, I'm like, hey, man, it wasn't me, I promise. <laughs> I'm just standing over here, it wasn't me. And then he started rapping, right? <laughs> so weird. Can I answer the question? I don't know. <laughs> Sam, I, I apologize. It's okay. For all of us. <laughs> hey, she's got the hardest job in showbiz, man. It's keeping this cast in line. I know. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, um, if Arissa does manage to survive this, um, do you think the two have a shot at getting together for real romantically? Yeah. Let's hope so, right? <laughs> what do you guys think? Yeah. Let's hope so. I think they have a shot. But it's going to be really tough, though. Okay. The second season. <laughs> you better do the right thing by it. <laughs> I love and respect your daughter, sir. <laughs> and my handgun goes full order. <laughs> go play, go play. And I want to bring up the fact that there's definitely something between Amanda and Nolan. And some see them as a will-they or won't-they couple of defiance. Mm -hmm. um, Julie, the... Uh, is there a potential for them to get together romantically? And do you think that would ruin their relationship at the end now? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think that's part of the fun of the show is when you watch, you kind of want them to be together and you hope that they will, but um, there's always an obstacle. Um, there was a big obstacle season one. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know she was your sister uh, the first time. <laughs> the third time and the fourth time. <laughs> uh, 
Mm -hmm. It had already been the first time, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> so there's quite a few obstacles. <laughs> And Grant, what do you think of that? I think that, uh, you know, I think Amanda's a handful. And uh, uh, for Nolan, you know, he's uh, he's kind of used to things being a little more casual, let's say. A little, hey, uh, uh, no, I don't want to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to hear this. <laughs> a, little, a little less committed, maybe. And, and I think that Julie, uh, oh, sorry, Amanda. <laughs> Amanda represents, uh, you know, the idea of something, uh, you know, that, that would probably, he probably wouldn't be able to run away from very easily. Uh, so, it's very hard to run away from me. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, you know, I think it's, I think it's emotionally, he probably, he's probably punching above his weight. Um, but she's really hot, so. <laughs> and he's, that matters a lot to Nolan. <laughs> That's it. That's Aww. all the time that we have. But I do want to thank Grant, Julie, Jamie, Stephanie, um, Graham, and Deshaun for being with us. So season two of Defiance airs in 2014 on Showcase. So look out for that and have fun at the autograph session if you want.